All right, thank you once again for joining us at Matoka TV Studio. Like today, we'll be showing to you a beautiful moment of apostle and our side teaching that will bless your life so much. And once again, don't forget to share, don't forget to subscribe. All right, let's go straight to the clip of what we have with you today. Chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things the things that the Gentiles seek because the Gentiles seek things but we are called to seek the kingdom called to seek and to apply ourselves to the will of God for our generation amen so that's our preoccupation as people under the government of God we we seek um, so if you notice in that scripture there are two things that we are enjoined to seek first of all we seek the kingdom and then we also seek his righteousness I will explain because while we're leading prayer, the scripture for the night came through the prayer leader. I'm just trying to create perspective using other scriptures for us to understand that scripture for the night. Is that clear? Now, you seek the kingdom and then you seek the righteousness that is in that kingdom. I'm going to explain as much as I can and I pray that God will give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Some time ago when I went for my youth service in the city of Kano, my purpose for youth service is to seek the face of God, to know what my life will be applied to achieve. Before youth service, I was under sponsorship from my parents. And I know that after youth service, so many people that played one role or the other to see me through school will feel it's irresponsible for me to still be expecting money from them. Because of that, I had to know what to apply myself to. And that was the reason for which I began to do the long fast that you heard about in one of my messages. I was seeking a kingdom. I was seeking to understand God's allotment for me in the kingdom. You must have heard from our tapes how that the goal of God, the salvation is not his goal. Salvation is just a remedial strategy to make us fit to be able to function in the kingdom. Because originally, it was the kingdom that God was extending to Adam. And now, our goal is to find out our allotment as ordained by God's policies in the kingdom of God. Do you realize that if it's not because of the kingdom, me and you will not know? There was something, there was a product of the kingdom that you listened to and you felt it struck a chord with your heart and then you went to seek the person that preached the sermon. That was how we now felt a baby of destiny leaping in our spirit man. Apart, just when you take an inventory of your life, you take a case study of your life, try to find out the friends you made because of your employment. You work in Central Bank, you met people there in Central Bank. Um, in the market, is a place you go to buy your jeans. They sell Wrangler jeans there. That's the only place you find Wrangler around your place. And then you went there, you met someone. And then you kept in touch with the person. Take note of the people that it was on the basis of the kingdom. You were in pursuit of something. The person was in pursuit of something. Somehow you people collided. It was not, there was no way you people could collide. And then something massive, a, a, a sweet kind of brotherhood begins to derive from that context. You see, you must understand that when we say seek the kingdom, 
as you begin to apprehend the things that God wants you to do and the allotment that he has made available to you, you are going to find, you are also going to find a company, you find friends, you find brethren. A new context of life is built just because you were seeking the kingdom. Like some people in Alaba, because they are uh, the importer that they patronize to bring their goods is the same importer. Sometimes they will merge, they will add money, they will contribute money so that they can, their goods can, can colonize a container. They were not planning to meet, but because of the kind of business they do, they were compelled, even though they don't like themselves, they were compelled to partner together because that's how uh, things are going to be made possible for that business to prosper. So there are situations that will make you meet, you will live your life within a context within a community. That's how the kingdom is. As you begin to seek the kingdom, you may not know, you may find out that your biological brothers and sisters may not be the first people in the array of the administration of your purpose, of your life. They may not even be close. My, some of my strongest secrets and, uh, do I have secrets? Okay, discussions. Because I preached all my secrets in my messages. <laughs> you know, sometimes you need people to talk to. As much as me and him, we are different kinds of people. But he is one of such people. I just call him. Say, see you, see this kind of. See, the kingdom of God will expose you to people that there was no means under heaven that you guys would have met and, and had any common ground whatsoever. It's not everybody you went to university with that is relevant to you now. And if you are like me, because the capacity of your phone to pick phone numbers is limited, if you have not been in touch with somebody for, for 15 years, the, you, you, there's no business occupying a slot in that limited once upon a time, guys from our secondary school say, hey, class 94. And then they opened one, one, one WhatsApp chat. Do you realize that I did not fit in? One WhatsApp chat. Do you realize that I did not fit in? The context in which my life was domiciled could not find premise within their jokes, within their... It, be, it almost started becoming like an abomination for me to be, so I exited myself. The kingdom will influence every strand of your life. Hallelujah. That's how that context is. It's, it's a civilization that God admits us into, and then it begins to shape every, the way you spend money, it shapes your relationships, and then in the pool of the people that you were exposed to by the kingdom, you now find one that will be your life partner. The kingdom shapes every... Don't think you have any life if it's not consistent with the framework of that universal set called what? The kingdom. Because the kingdom of God is vast. It's a vast um, civilization. You will need to do diligent search in order for you to find that which is consistent with the emphasis of your ordination. Are you with me? Hence the word, seek ye. Is that clear? Uh, and then a Greek word that the scientist borrowed was now used thereafter. Seek ye proton. Proton, that's first. Uh, there, there's something called molecular chemistry. Okay, let's not go there. It will, be, it will complicate everything. All right. Okay, let's just use it, the word, the way it is in English. As a matter of priority, he's saying you should do what? Seek your allotment in the kingdom of God so that you can, you can align your life adequately. The reason for this counsel, are you still with me? Yes. Stay with me, just stay. Stay. The reason for this counsel is that there's a possibility that you begin to build your life. You married the wrong man because the context in which you married wasn't kingdom. I'm not talking church, I'm talking kingdom.
Let me give you an idea because you are confused when I say I'm not talking church. There's this guy, what's his name again? I think his name is Chuka. He's, he's a worshiper. So one of his greatest assets is his keyboard. It's a special type. So he can just wake up from his bed and go on the keyboard. Maybe a song has come. Then he will sing that song. His neighbors had to endure his presence in the environment. His neighbor, they got used to the fact that... <laughs> So he found a beautiful lady in church and, and began to court her and all of that. And then one of those days he was talking to her and then one of the sons came. He ran into the... And he, he struck. And the lady walked up to him. And said, what was that? <laughs> the reason why that contradiction is there is because the arrangement was not according to the kingdom. So God doesn't want you to be in an emotional situation where you have married the wrong husband, you have produced a wrong generation, and then you now found the kingdom. You now need to be, do some demolition. It will, be, it will be emotional. So he now said, seek ye first. Oh, how I wish I could bring the chemistry aspect. You, your eyes will seek ye first. It is in your emotional interest for you to get aligned with the substance and the demands of the kingdom for your life so that you can align it from the cradle and then it will be a sequence of the possibilities of the mercies of God thereafter. Please help me tell your neighbor you need to seek these things. So we are in that season where we are we traditionally seek the kingdom. You know, if God were a formula, a button that you press, we would have loved it more. You see, just like our pastors, some of our pastors attempted to make us feel that God was a formula. And then if you know how to press the buttons, then you just get the result. You see, unfortunately for us, the kingdom of God doesn't operate by such formulas. The kingdom of God is sought out. You see, you, the fact that you heard God yesterday doesn't exempt you from the need to hear him today. Especially if I have a conference to preach and I have more than three days in the conference to preach. I will need to hear God for each day of the conference. You see, you might have a powerful message, but if it's going to be more than four days, five days, you will need to hear God. You will need God more than a message. Just like a prepared man is better than a prepared message. So you need to hear God to know what to say today. You need to hear God to know what to say. To so the formula of the kingdom is that it is a kingdom that must be sought out. You don't, they don't master it. You are a novice tomorrow morning. You need to seek it out to know how it works tomorrow. You will be challenged with circumstances that your wisdom as a chartered accountant will be insufficient to prosecute. You will need to seek. So it's a kingdom for which we, we never graduate from what? So if it is so critical to seek in this kingdom, why is it that pastors don't teach people how to seek God? Because you can't be exempted. That's how it works here. In, in, in order to entrench the fact that we cannot escape seeking, he says all these other things to the Gentiles seek. He said the Gentiles, even though they are not aware, they are, they are in a search. It's just that they are seeking the wrong things. But the default mode of human beings is that they are seekers. What would determine the outcome of your life different from someone else's life is what you seek. So Jesus in this place gives us a mighty disclosure. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So let me give you an insight. Oh, you see, life will not be sweet. Life is meaningless without your spirit holding on to the position and the emphasis 
of the kingdom of God for your life. You can survive a bad marriage if you know what God wants you to do. You can survive poverty. You can survive pressure. You can survive sickness and still be have cause to give thanks to God if your heart has locked steady on your role in the kingdom of God. Depression now comes when people are, are without any grip of any sort concerning kingdom matters. Remember, the shape of what we're talking about is that it is hidden, it is classified, it is a mystery, so that you will not joke with it. God wants you to put in some efforts that the Holy Spirit will help you in, so that when you stumble on the things you'll find in the kingdom, you will consider them there. All right? So, let me speak to you about my own life. Because any good preacher that is progressive with Jesus, in fact, what gives me authority to talk to you? Because it's hard to talk to you. You are not aware of that. It's very hard. What gives me authority? To, I don't get used to preaching because I'm not a born talker. I'm still the stammerer. So if I'm going to talk to you, he needs to give me some air time, spiritual air time to survive on. Sometimes God can weaken an aspect of your life just so that you can submit to the seeking protocol that is in the kingdom of God. May the Lord give you understanding. Maybe he, he weakens your memory. So you need to pray to, to, to sit for an exam. That's very good. He weakens your, your speech. Uh, so you know what you want to say, but it's difficult for you to say it. It will help you pray. Don't, don't ever desire that that infirmity will be taken away. No. Oh, my. I pray to God. I, you know, I was born with facial palsy. And I prayed to him to heal it. He said, no, it will not be healed. Anytime you see yourself in the mirror, then you remember how I took you from the sheep coat. May the Lord give you, it's a parable. May the Lord give you understanding. Now, so we seek the kingdom. In my current seekings, the Lord said that, um, that is to me now. He said, the strongest grace I've invested in your life is a grace to teach and the season for which I raised you just arrived. There is so much falsehood in my body and I'm going to use you as a plumb line. That's why I, I can't relate with just anybody. Because if you see me with some people on Facebook, you will doubt my convictions. If I tell you how many people have invited me, you people, people, but when I check them in the radar, oh, a lot of, you will hear things, so, because today, the this year, the devil is set to give people occasion to talk about me. Yeah, we also found out. All right? So a lot of people say I'm proud. That's the price you pay. If you're a kingdom man that closes your ears to the world and you open it to the Holy Ghost, people will call you names, strange names. Meanwhile, if you are concerned about the names that they get to call you, it means you are not deep in God. You have not found security in God. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. Amen. All right, so strange names. I can say it off the microphone. I can mention the names off mic, off camera, if you are interested in knowing them. So it's not as if it's any secret, not, not any big thing. But you see, I can't respond to those people's invitation because God is giving me a ministry of purification. A ministry that will differentiate between that which is profane and that which is holy. That which is pure and that which is an abomination. And if you are going to run such an errand, you must be a plumb line, a ruler, a majoring instrument yourself. Totally consumed under the government of God. When you begin to understand what God wants to spend your life to achieve, you yourself will begin to know, okay, I can relate with this person. Not because you are superior, but because of the kingdom. Those things that are hidden that you get to find when you seek will determine your texture, your flavor, your taste buds, your lifestyle. Everything is rooted in it. That's where you get your lifestyle from. That's where you get the thing that you spend your life to achieve from. 
That's why you will get the, um, the experience with which you will communicate to your son. And that this is why I did this. It's because God said this. Because if you are watching a man of faith from the outside, he actually looks like a madman. Oh, you are not aware of that? His, 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 his pivot for existence is not drawn from logic. So there are many times that he's going to be misunderstood. But that's what happens to a man that has sought the kingdom and found his context within the massive island of that civilization. Seek ye first. What? The kingdom of God. And do you... I want you to realize that that seeking is not a one-stop activity. That's the model of life that Jesus is prescribing for us. We are going to be seekers. Oh, you are not with me. I travel to the nation of Brazil. It's a very, it's an affliction to travel that long. When you're on a plane for more than 10 hours, it's as if by the time the plane lands and you're coming out, it's as if you were raised from the dead. So I was there, especially when you cross two, three time zones, even your body clock collapses. And then you begin to sleep when people are awake. And you'll be awake when people sleep. And that was the case. <laughs> May the Lord help. I'm just excited. I love you guys. I love you guys. So I went there, and for five days, I was awake, seriously awake in the night, so strong in the night. And we were told by the old saints that if you ever find difficulties in sleeping, convert it to prayer and Satan will help you to sleep. You don't need pirithol. You don't need... <coughs> what are the names of those sleeping tablets that people get to take? Valium. You don't need Valium. Just wake up and begin to pray in tongues. He will help you. He will come to your aid. And he will come quickly. Because you will do damage to the territory if you linger in that your pastime. So I began to pray in the spirit. Not because I was praying for anything. I was just following the counsel of the ancient people. And as I zoomed off in the spirit, I zoomed off in the spirit. I was praying. Then some anointing was being poured. And the prayer was beginning to affect my heart. You know, any spiritual activity that you do, that does not affect your heart, cannot change your life. It's just like, um, do you understand what I'm talking about? So it began to affect my heart. There was an anointing poured, and it was be beginning to draw depth from my inside. So affecting the foundation of my soul. I was feeling what I was doing. Oh, that's what God does when he wants to open one of the things that are locked up on your inside. that have been kept from, from you, not, huh? they have been kept for you, not kept from you. Ah, I had a vision. No, 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 no. I continued the prayer and, you know, as always, Satan showed up and aided my sleep. Say, sleep now. Thank you. Sleep. And the sleep came like a storm. But I had gained some mileage in the heavenlies. When I went to sleep, my physical senses were switched off, but my spiritual senses were switched on, and I began this dream. And in this dream, um, it was John Knox. He was the only one I could recognize. They, they were high up into the heavens. Their garments were like curtains, this white curtain, high up. And, and especially John Knox, if he speaks, the thing shakes heaven. And what were they saying? Because it was as if thunder was blasting. So it was when I came close and I discovered it wasn't thunder that was blasting. These just men that were made perfect, they were speaking. It was their utterances. And I could hear John Knox clearly. And he was saying that in my days on earth, I functioned as an intercessor. And there are many things, oh God, you promised us that have not yet happened now. And there were 12 of them. It was only John Knox I could recognize. Because of those demands that they were making, a committee was set up in heaven. There were only two people on the committee table that I could recognize. One was Abraham, 
and the other one was Joel. And Abraham happened to be the chairman of the committee. And a detachment of angels were given to this committee to work with them. And they sent the angels to Africa. The angels had an instrument, strange instrument. Strange, I've never seen it before. It was like a lamp. And it's just this, something like this. And when they lift it up, then numerous colors will, will be revealed on people's heads. You will never see those colors until those lamps are lifted. The moment they raise the lamps, and they were looking for color yellow. And in Africa, yellow was scarred. At the end of the day, like 24 people were chosen from Africa. And I realized, they, okay, the, the dream of the first night has ended. Second night, I couldn't sleep again. I started the exercise, this time with great encouragement. Because <laughs> it seems God is in the mood to show things. So I was more deliberate. And Satan came again, and he induced sleep like a hurricane. I slept again, then the encounter continued. 24 people were chosen from Africa, and uh, screening began. The kind of cheers they were using was not too different from these ones. Those people, those committee people, screened and screened and screened. There were six levels of screening, and it's fifth level. I was to be screened out. I, I didn't know the statistics, the documents. I didn't know what parameters were being used. But I was to be screened out. Then one of the elders on the committee table, which, who I was not given the privilege to know who he was, said, ah, I know this one. And the judgment to strike me out of the process was stayed. But with, with great warning, with great warning. I, I thought I was good. My score was wonderful. Not even if they check for two, I should be there. But you see, this council we are talking about, they don't bribe them. We, we are so used to the Nigerian context. <laughs> they are the reproach of bribe is not within that space. So that elder spoke. He spoke for long, spoke. Well, if, it, if I had my diaries, I would have brought instances of sacrifice, brought instances of this and that and that and that and that and that. So they staged that, that process. And I continued. And then when we went to the next stage, the next stage was the sixth stage, my score there was now too bright. I said, how can this thing happen? I was almost screened out, and now they, well, well, I don't know how that happens. But at that time, we were only six people. And then there's this big machine. As you're coming before the machine, it will give you a printout. So when my own printout came, I saw the United Kingdom. I saw Ghana. I saw South Africa. And then the angel that stood by the side now said, your ministry will affect the foundation of the United Kingdom. It will affect the foundation of South Africa. It will affect the foundation of Ghana. So when I now looked like this, I now saw that the person behind me was evangelist Kechuku, the guy in Brazil. And then I saw his own printout, but I only saw one nation. I saw Nigeria. So I didn't see the other nations. I said, ah. So the sixth night, I now strengthened myself. But you know it's not of him that will it. <laughs> <laughs> I strengthened myself for another. In fact, the sleep didn't even come. <laughs> so I don't even know who is responsible for the sleep. Is, is, is it God that is responsible for the the, of these things, we know not. But when I came out of that vision, it became clear to me what the assignment was. And you will not know, anytime I attempted to go to Ghana, 
there were principalities that wanted to force me not to come. The first time, it was a COVID test we went to do at the rev reference lab of NCDC. And when I showed up there, they said, Apostle, Apostle. The, the chief man said, don't, the, these people should not pay. These ones, they are, they are my people. Ah, the favor was massive. But we are at the airport the next day, the results were not coming out. We said, what's happening? They said, the person that is to, to, supposed to sign is in a meeting. The aircraft was filled up. Our tickets were there. But because of COVID, we could not go. So I just said, okay, let me walk to the office and say, you guys have a flight for tomorrow. As I just walked there. They say, hey! I said, okay, now that's... I said, I have a challenge. They say, any challenge. They kept that flight for one hour. So in the eyes of the demon that was regulating things, one hour is enough. He has missed it. That's when they released. But God opened the window of favor. And in that meeting on the last night, there were five crippled people that began to open. Any time is to go to Ghana, something will go wrong. The last one, everything went wrong. So that we had to fly to Lagos to travel by land with my daughter. Only my daughter, Esther, could fly. The rest of us. But I say, I already know that this is part of my jurisdiction. If it's by waterway, by airways, by road, or by spirit transport, <laughs> <laughs> we will be in Ghana. Hallelujah. Life becomes full of meaning. You'll be able to interpret the challenges and the warfare that come your way when you have received a disclosure from the kingdom. You will know why Satan is fighting. You will understand the circle of the move of Satan's attacks and you will be encouraged knowing that the attacks are suggestive of, of how much a threat you have become in the kingdom of darkness because the ammunition that Satan uses against you is suggestive of his perception of the threat that you have become in his kingdom. You'll be able to understand the psychology of the kingdom of darkness. Everything will just be easy for you to interpret when you are standing on the ground of the implementation of secret things that you have uncovered from the kingdom of God. You will meet friends in the kingdom. You will meet partners in destiny in the kingdom. At first, you started alone doing retreat in the University of Ibadan hiding in the forest to pray. But that your prayer will bring you into a community, a company. Bring you into a functional body. So many things about your, your perceptions will be shaped by so many bright people that God will bring your way. And you'll find out that whereas you pick just a piece of the jigsaw puzzle, oh, you will find so many pieces and life will begin to make meaning it's a, it's, it's, it's a blessing to walk with God. The second thing he said that we must also seek is his righteousness. Now, you see, we must understand this second aspect consistent with the first aspect. Are you still with me? Yes. The first aspect is a kingdom, like a nation, a country. And in order for us to have a functional country, we must have laws. We must have laws. And when you begin to default in the laws of the country, the country has law enforcement systems that will bring you to captivity. So when you have found your place in the kingdom of God and you are beginning to secure the will of God that your life will be spent serving, don't forget that you must acquaint yourselves with the laws of the nation that you have citizenship with. They are laws. Are you here? Because if you are in the, nation, the kingdom and you are not ordering your life according to the laws, you will become a threat to the system. And the system will need to send law enforcement agents to bring you into captivity. Not Satan, no. I'm talking of the internal regulatory system. So 
There are laws for everything in the kingdom of God. There are laws for prosperity. And the law for prosperity is consecration. In the Old Testament, are you with me? I see, it seems I caught your attention when I spoke about prosperity. In the Old Testament, the requirement for every Israelite in terms of commitment was to pay tight. As long as he has paid tight, he has given God his due. It means he, has, he reverences God, he acknowledges God. God is first place for him. Before he uses money for any mundane use, he commits to God his portion. But fortunately for us, we happen to be in the category of the firstborn. If you notice in the land of Egypt, the angel of death was coming to destroy the firstborn. And it was concerning the firstborn that God gave the word of wisdom through Moses that God will accept a lamb in place of a person. Because in the realm of the spirit, substitution is a possibility. So when that ram was slaughtered under the principle of substitution, the blood of the lamb was placed on the lintel and the doorpost of the house. And when the angel of death showed up in Egypt, he realized that someone helped him with a job in Goshen. Someone helped him take out the firstborn in Goshen. And that's why he passed over. It's not because there was favoritism. It's just because there was a, an item of wisdom that came from God concerning the use of a lamb to represent a person. So in the eyes of that spirit, the job in Goshen is already done. So he passed over and went to execute his mandate on the rest of Egypt. When they went into the wilderness, God now requested that all those guys for which that wisdom was applied are dedicated unto God. Their own status before God is consecration because it was that blood that bought their life from death. Do you get that? So the Bible now says that we are the church of the firstborn. It means all of us are firstborn because we were bought by the price of the blood. The requirement for us is therefore consecration. It means that your life does not belong to you. Hmm. The Bible says that if he died for all, and indeed he died, so that they which live will no longer live for themselves. It's in keeping with this matter that I'm talking about. They will live for him. So if you are born again here, you are a child of God here, but you are living for yourself. The reason why you are living is just to have money to survive, and you hop to VI every Monday, hop to VI every Tuesday. You come back home 11 in the night, and when your child is 12 years old, he calls you uncle. <laughs> it happened to me before. Don't laugh. It happened to me. I came back from the field, came home. And my son said, uncle, yeah. Yeah, I knew that. You, you have not been there, so you don't know. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. So I'm preaching from my spirit. If there are some laughter that you laugh. The thing will. Where did I stop? Give me the PowerPoint. Okay, consecration. Now what that means is, I am living for God. That's the meaning of my life. I'm living for him that died and rose again for me. So if I want to live for him, I'll need to ask him, what is his prescription for my life? Do you get that? That is the reason why I cannot function in the kingdom without seeking. Because the things that he will tell me are not commonplace. They are kept as mysteries. They are sealed things. And the reason is, is that way is because so that Satan will not be able to tap into that frequency. The Bible reveals is full of the miscalculations of the enemy. It's because the things of the kingdom are held up as mysteries. It is through your life that these mysteries will be administered so that principalities and powers can update their data bank when they see the mysteries that they cannot peep into being worked out through your own life as a specimen. Is that clear? All right, so. The kingdom has laws. 
laws on various levels, laws in service, laws of brotherhood. Do you understand? And God knows that there are people that will want to violate the law. He knows that. But so that it would not be said that he did not counsel him, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and align yourself with what? I was telling Pastor Grace this morning. I said, Pastor Grace, if you are a preacher of the gospel and it is, you are not conscious of the fact that you can fall, you are already falling. It means you have not seen your continual need for the mercy of God. It's not God's fault. It's just that you don't understand how the kingdom works. There is an allocation of mercy that is given to every functionary of God every day. You know, I've changed a bit. I've changed a bit. I've changed a bit. If we were in the past, that would have been, it's no longer a problem to me. There are laws. There are prayer laws. How that the Bible reveals that Jesus, a great while before day, he goes into a solitary place and he prayed. He gave us a pattern for prayer. There are laws for everything. So if I'm consecrated to God, it means that what I have is not mine. So if the Lord makes a demand, just like he did on the 1st of January, he said, you send one million here. You send this here, send that here. Because it's not mine, I'm a faithful steward. I administer it. And the more I do so, the more it multiplies. And God didn't allow me to do business for a long time. He wanted me to see that the kingdom, the principles in the kingdom are reliable first. So that I will not think that it's my business that is doing something. I have proven the word. What I'm telling you, I have done it. They are laws. You cannot be in the kingdom of God and be ignorant. It doesn't, ignorance doesn't work there. You need to know that the foundation, even of your faith, is knowledge. Are you with me? And so, part of the motivation for Bible study is to find the laws. You need to see how beautiful my wife was when I was cutting her. But there are laws. My flesh wanted to take her to the bush straight <laughs> and explore. But there are laws. <laughs> when you begin to see that the flesh wants to go this way and you have the grace to speak to the flesh and say, you're on your own. It means you actually belong to a kingdom because you are careful to be compliant to the law. There are several people that will say, the laws don't exist. And I don't have time this evening to tell you the consequence of assuming that the laws don't exist. There is no nation that doesn't have laws. Even, even a, a nation of thieves, when thieves unite, <laughs> may, you, may, may the law give you understanding. <laughs> When thieves unite to invade, they, they have principles. If there is community, then there are principles, then there are laws. It can be, maybe everybody from your clan, there is a more, except you. There is a way they live. There are laws. So I knew, I began to learn the laws of God early. And I was determined. It was not because I had a mentor. You guys here are lucky. If I had a mentor, it was in books. Who we were in the village, we were in the countryside. And God used the voice of Watchman Nee to pastor me for many. Because when I come to church, what comes from the pulpit is <laughs> junk. I knew that since. The pulpit was corrupted in Nigeria long ago and only few shining lights there were that walked our lands. There are laws. There are laws. 
And he said the same way you seek the kingdom to find the will of God for your life, you will also seek. Because when God begins to send you, the anointing he puts upon you comes from the realm of immortality. There are laws that govern it. Oh, if it's revelatory power God gives you, he will charge you for every act of pride. Because pride and revelation don't go together. They are laws. He said, don't just seek the kingdom. Seek to be right with the laws. Are you here? I know the laws of the grace I can. The other day we wanted to travel to Abuja. Two cars were packed in the parking hole. And I told Philip, we are going to the motor park. He thought I was joking. We, we chartered a vehicle without AC. And it, when it rams into the, the red dust, it will bless you with. <laughs> so he, he was wondering, why is God doing like this? I want to show him that my confidence is not in any of those things. If we had taken any of those things that day, we would have ended up fractured. For that day, the means of transport was at the park. Oh, if you have not found security in Christ, you will, you, you'll be, you will die in decorum. <laughs> it is slavery. That level of packaging is slavery. You don't know how much liberty there is for you to be a free man. <laughs> there are laws. Because God is going to admit you into the school of wisdom. As you begin to know those laws and apply them, you will start becoming wise. A wise man. A wise woman. Even your, your son will look at you and say, Car, my father is wise. There are laws. You will never enter into the precious things of the kingdom until you begin to subject yourself under the government of that kingdom. Have you not seen people that God anointed? The anointing is what destroyed them. Because they wanted to operate without laws. The same thing you pray for, you pray for oil. Oil. He said, as much as you seek the kingdom, seek the Lord. Some people would have been better off without the anointing. They would have lived longer. Now they pitch themselves with God. Because they are expecting God to waive his laws for them because they are stars. How are they falling from heaven? O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. No one was as beautiful as Lucifer. No anointing on you will make you as beautiful as him. He fell. He had the power to weaken the nations. He fell. And nobody mourned him. 